how much uh, information do you think is required to, to, to be a house cat? So you have to be able to, uh, when you see a box, go in it. When you see a human compute the most evil action, if there's a thing that's near an edge, you knock it off. All of that, plus the extra stuff you mentioned, which is a, a great self-awareness of the physics of your of your own body and the, and the world. How much knowledge is acquired do you think to solve it? Um, I don't even know how to measure an answer to that question. I'm not sure how to measure it, but whatever it is, it fits in about about 800,000 neurons, uh, 800 million neurons, sorry. The representation does. Everything, all knowledge, everything, right? Um, you know, it's less than a billion. A dog is two billion, but a cat is less than one billion. Mm. And uh, so multiply that by a thousand and you get the number of synapses. Uh, and I think almost all of it is is learned through this, you know, a sort of self-supervised learning. Although, you know, I, I think a, a tiny sliver is learned through reinforcement learning and certainly very little through, you know, classical supervised learning, although it's not even clear how supervised learning actually works in, uh, in the biological world. Um, so I think almost all of it is, uh, is uh, self-supervised learning. But it's driven by uh, the, the sort of ingrained objective functions that a cat or a human have at the base of their brain, which kind of drives their um, their behavior. So, you know, nature tells us uh, you're hungry. It doesn't tell us how to feed, uh, feed ourselves. That's, that's something that the rest of our brain has to figure out, right? Well, it's interesting because there might be more like deeper objective functions that are lying the whole thing. So hung, hunger may be some kind of, you, now you go to like neurobiology, it might be just the brain, uh, trying to maintain homeostasis. So hunger is just one of the human perceivable symptoms of the brain being unhappy with the way things are currently. Right. So it could be just like one really dumb objective function at the core. But that's how that's how behavior is 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 driven. Uh the the fact that, you know, the orbital ganglia uh drive us to do things that are that are different from say an orangutan or certainly a cat. Uh, is what makes you know human nature versus orangutan nature versus cat nature. Uh, so, for example, uh, you know our uh, basal ganglia drives us to seek the company of uh, other humans, and that's because nature has figured out that we need to be social animals for our species to survive, and it's true of many uh, uh, primates. It's not true of orangutans. Orangutans are solitary animals. Um, they don't seek the company of others. In fact, they avoid them. <laughs> uh, in fact, they scream at them when they come too close because they're territorial. Because mm -hmm. uh, for for their su survival, you know, uh, evolution has figured out that's the best thing. I mean, they are occasionally social, of course, for you know, um, <laughs> reproduction and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, but but they're mostly solitary. So uh, so all of those behaviors are not part of intelligence. You know, people say, "Oh, you're never going to have intelligent machines because you know human intelligence is social." But then you look at orangutans, you look at octopus. Octopus never know their parents; mm -hmm. they barely interact with any other, and they and they get to be really smart in less than a, less than a year, in like half a year. Um, you know, in a year they're adults, in two years they're dead. So um, there are things that we think as humans are intimately linked with intelligence, like social interaction, like language. We think, I think we give way too much importance to language as a substrate of intelligence as humans, because we think our reasoning is so linked with language. So for, for to solve the house cat intelligence problem, you think you could do it on a desert island. You could have... Pretty much. You could just have a cat sitting there um, looking at the waves, at the ocean waves, and figure a lot of it out. It needs to have sort of, you know, the right set of drives uh, to kind of, you know, get it right. to do the thing and learn the appropriate things, right? But uh, um, like, for example, you know, uh, baby humans are, are driven to learn to stand up and walk. Okay, you know, it's not, that's kind of, this desire is hardwired. How to do it precisely is not, that's learned. Mm. But the desire to- To walk? Move around and stand up, mm. uh, that's sort of probably uh, hardwired. I but it's very simple to hardwire this kind of stuff. What, oh, like the desire to, well, that's interesting. You're hardwired to want to walk. That's not a, there's gotta be a deeper need for walking. 
I, th I think it was probably socially imposed by society that you need to walk all no. the other bipedal. No, like a lot of simple animals that, you know, they would probably walk without ever watching any other members of the species. It seems like a scary thing to have to do because you suck at bipedal walking at first. It seems crawling is much safer, much yeah. more like, why are you in a hurry? <laughs> well, because because you have this thing that drives you to do it, you know? Um, which is sort of part of uh, the sort of human development. Is that understood actually what? Not entirely, no. What is the, what's the reason to get on two feet? It's really hard. Like most animals don't get on two feet. Why well, that? they get on four feet. You know, many mammals get on four feet. Yeah, they Very get. quickly, some of them extremely quickly. But I don't, you know, uh, like from the last time I've interacted with a table, that's much more stable than a thing on two legs. It's just a really hard problem. Yeah, I mean, birds have figured it out with two feet. Well, technically, we can go into ontology. They have four. I guess they have two feet. They have two feet. Chickens. You know, dinosaurs have two feet. Many of them. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just now learning that T-Rex was eating grass, not other animals. T-Rex <laughs> might have been a friendly, friendly pet.